imagine you're very confident that we were going to be visited by super intelligent aliens um, in, let's say, 10 years or 20 years at the most. Super intelligent. So you think within 20 years yeah, so we have alien and Earth? <laughs> well, digital super intelligence will be like an alien. It will be like an alien. Yeah. But, but my question is, do you think there is other intelligent life outside the Earth? It seems probable. But I think this is, this is one of the great questions in physics and philosophy uh, is, uh, where are the aliens? Maybe they're among us. I don't know. Uh, some people think I'm an alien. Not true. Not true. But <laughs> maybe we are aliens. Of course, I'd say maybe that, we I? are alien, Ellen. I mean, if you look at this part of the world, yeah, they believe that human beings are not from Earth. They came from somewhere else. Eve maybe. and Adam came from somewhere else to Earth. So, in a way, human being alien to this mm -hmm. land. Do you think we'll make contact with alien within the, the next 50 years? Well, that's a really tough one to say. Um, I mean, if, if there are super intelligent aliens out there, they're probably already observing us. That would seem quite likely. And we just um, are not smart enough to realize it. Um, but I can do some, some back of the envelope calculations and um, any advanced alien civilization that, that was at all interested in populating the galaxy, um, even without, uh, without exceeding the speed of light, even if you're only moving at, say, 10 or 20 percent of the speed of light, um, you could uh, populate the entire galaxy in, let's say, 10 million years, maybe 20 million years max. This is nothing, you know, in the grand scheme of things. First of all, congratulations. Um, you've launched a rather unconventional payload into space, one that's generated a lot of buzz. And there's a lot of people, some of them citizen scientists, some of them they are just newbies when it comes to tracking things in space are going to try mm -hmm. and track the, the Tesla and understand what's happening to it. You know, like that movie, Dude, Where's My Car? And other than the live webcam today, what is SpaceX going to do to interact with this community of t Tesla trackers once the car leaves orbit? Do you have a plan, or are you just going to kind of wait and see what bubbles up on the Internet and react to it? Um, we don't have a plan. No plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, the battery is going to last about 12 hours from launch, roughly. Um, and um, after that, it's just going to be out there in deep space for maybe millions or billions of years. Who knows? Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe discovered by some future alien race, thinking, what the heck, what, what were these guys doing? Did they worship this car? <laughs> Why do they have a little car in the car? <laughs> that will really confuse them. So, Elon, you are really quite unique, I feel, in being so interested in the long-term future of humanity. Well, I don't think I'm that unique. Um, you have an institute. Uh, <laughs> clearly, you're interested in that, too. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm curious, your interest in the far future humanity, when did that begin? How did that start? Well, uh, I think it was when I, my, my interest in the future of humanity is, uh, I, I guess, as a function of reading a lot of uh, sci-fi and philosophy as a kid, and, uh, and then um, and, and just sort of thinking about, okay, what, what's, what's important uh, to do? Like, why, should, why do anything? What's the meaning of life? Um, and, you know, I came to the conclusion that what we really need to do is um, make sure that life continues into the future, um, and particularly conscious uh, life. Um, and, and in doing so, we'll, better, we'll, we'll be better able to understand the nature of the universe and, um, and, and achieve greater enlightenment. Uh, One thing I really admire about you is you don't just talk about the future of humanity, you actually start companies and do things about it. So what made you so audacious? Well, I don't really think of uh, these things as all that audacious. Uh, 
they seem like uh, natural things to do. Um, you know, it, um, it's sort of a, more of a long-term optimization rather than a short-term one. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, um, not, not that I think, you know, everyone should be doing these things, but someone needs to do them. Um, so, so, you know, so if I see that, well, somebody is not doing this and maybe I could be helpful, uh, then, then, then I try to do something in that regard. Weren't there some people along the way though who told you that, ah, that's crazy to start a space company or a new electric car company or a well, solar company? Sure. I mean, there are lots of people that said uh, that the likelihood of failure was extremely high um, and that it was a sure thing to do. Um, and when I started SpaceX, uh, one of my closest friends got a compilation of rocket failures and made me watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there were lots of people that tried to talk me out of it. Um, and the joke was, you know, how do you, how do you um, make a small fortune in the rocket business? Well, you start with a large one. Um, <laughs> and um, I got told that joke so many times that, um, that I, obviously I knew the punchline. You know, so I just tell them the punchline, and they would look at me like, "Is he serious?" Or, <laughs> um, or I was like, would I, or like, say, "Why did you start a rocket company?" It's, it, it, like, um, I was trying to figure out the fastest way to turn a large fortune into a small one. That seemed like a good way to go. <laughs> um, but, but the thing is, like, I already thought the probability of failure was was high, and that, and that you know, with that, the likelihood of success was therefore low. Um, and uh, so this was not new information. I, I, I thought maybe SpaceX had, I don't know, 10 or 20% chance of success, and Tesla probably similar. Um, I, thought, I thought Solar City had a much higher chance of success, um, but probably still only, you know, I don't know, 50% or something like that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, for, for the longest time, I mean, and, and SpaceX and Tesla almost didn't. Uh, survived. I mean, it came very close to perishing as companies um, in, in, in 2008 and 2009 with the Great Recession. Uh, it was an extremely close call. Looking ahead, what do you think are the technologies that are going to have the greatest impact on society? So I think there's, there's probably five, five categories. Yeah. Um, there's, um, and you know, I'm not even giving a particular order, but uh, making life multi-planetary, uh, achieving sustainable uh, production and consumption of energy, uh, um, obviously the, 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 the internet as a whole, I mean the continued growth of the internet, uh, the, uh, and then potentially if we do this, reprogramming human genetics, and, and the fifth one would be artificial intelligence. Um, so, you know, working on the, the kind of the first three, but not not the last two. Um, I think you know the last two. I think have the greatest potential to be a double-edged sword. So, when you call uh, artificial intelligence a double-edged sword, you talk a bit about the positive edge first. What do you see as the greatest benefits we can get from AI? Well, um, the, the the greatest benefits from AI would probably be uh, in eliminating uh, drudgery, so like in terms of, or, or tasks that, 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 are, that are mentally boring, um, not, not interesting. Uh, there's arguably breakthroughs in areas that are currently beyond human intelligence, or at least for now beyond human intelligence. I think we could probably solve them in the long term. Uh, such as um, you know the classic sort of curing cancer and um, addressing diseases of aging, Alzheimer's, and all these things. So there's you know, insert you know various like intractable intractable problems to human intelligence or currently what seem to be intractable problems. And then the, if you had something that was way smarter, it could solve those problems. And turning to negative uh, edge, um, well, I think it, it's. It's best to prepare for, uh, uh, to, to try to prevent a negative circumstance from occurring 
than to wait for it to occur and then be reactive. So, and, and this is a case where the potential, the range of negative outcomes, are quite, some of them are quite severe. Um, so it's not clear whether we'd be able to recover from some of these negative, negative outcomes. In fact, some of the, certainly you can construct scenarios where um, recovery of human civilization does not occur. Um, and when the risk is that severe, it seems like you should be proactive and not reactive.